forests, grasslands, rainforests, tundra, no matter where you go on Earth, the kind of vegetation growing there tells you a story. It tells you about the climate, the soil, the elevation, the rainfall, and even about the people who live there. These different plant-covered regions are called natural vegetation regions, and they each have unique patterns, challenges, and importance. Let's take a look at some of the major vegetation regions around the world. In tropical rainforests, like the Amazon in South America, or the Congo Basin in Africa, the climate is hot and wet all year long. Trees grow tall and thick, creating dense canopies that block out the sun. These areas are bursting with biodiversity, meaning thousands of different species live together in a single region. But they're also fragile. A small change, like cutting down trees or changing rainfall patterns, can affect the entire system. In grasslands, like the prairies of Canada, the Great Plains of the United States, or the steppes of Central Asia, there are few trees, but plenty of tall grasses and wildflowers. Grasslands often have dry seasons and rich soil, which makes them great for farming. But converting too much natural grassland into farmland can lead to soil erosion and loss of native species. In boreal forests, which stretch across much of northern Canada, Russia, and Scandinavia, the climate is colder and the trees, mostly coniferous, like spruce and pine, are adapted to short summers and long winters. Boreal forests store huge amounts of carbon, which makes them important in the fight against climate change. But they're at risk from logging, wildfires, and warming temperatures. Tundra regions, found in the Arctic, have very little vegetation at all. The soil is frozen for most of the year, called permafrost, and only mosses, lichens, and small shrubs grow during the brief summer. But as the planet warms and permafrost melts, even these small systems are changing and releasing greenhouse gases in the process. So what's causing these changes to vegetation? Some changes are natural. Droughts, floods, wildfires, and climate shifts have always affected plants and ecosystems. For example, lightning-caused wildfires are part of the natural renewal process in some forests. Volcanic eruptions can destroy vegetation, but also create rich soil for future growth. But today, human activity is a much bigger part of the story. When people cut down forests to make space for roads, cities, or farmland, it's called deforestation. This is one of the most serious threats to vegetation worldwide. In places like the Amazon rainforest, millions of trees are lost each year, sometimes to logging, sometimes to cattle ranching, and sometimes to large-scale agriculture. Another big issue is topsoil erosion. When forests or grasslands are cleared and not protected, the wind and rain carry the top layer of soil away. Without that layer, plants can't grow, and the land becomes dry and less productive. Chemical fertilizers and monoculture also impact vegetation. When the same crop is planted over and over on the same land, like only corn or only wheat, the soil loses nutrients. Pesticides can harm nearby plants and insects, and the ecosystem becomes weaker and less diverse. Grazing by domestic animals, like cattle or sheep, can also lead to overuse. In some places, animals eat the plants faster than they can regrow, damaging the land long term. Finally, invasive species, plants or animals brought in from other places, 
can take over and push out native vegetation. This often happens when people introduce species on purpose, like for landscaping, or by accident, like seeds stuck to shoes or equipment. In Canada, plants like dog strangling vine or purple loosestrife have spread quickly and taken over habitats that once supported native species. Each of these factors, whether natural or human, creates a ripple effect. And those ripples don't stop with plants. When vegetation changes, it affects animals, water, soil, climate, and people too. So here's your challenge. You're going to create an impact web that shows the many different causes and effects of changes to natural vegetation. Here's how it works. Choose one vegetation region to focus on. For example, tropical rainforest, grassland, boreal forest, or tundra. Create a web-style diagram that starts with that activity in the center. Use pictures and words to show different factors causing change. Include at least two natural processes, like fire or drought, and two human activities, like farming or logging. Then, for each factor, use pictures and words to show at least two effects that happen as a result. How the vegetation, animals, soil, water, or people are impacted. Use arrows to connect the ideas and show how different factors can affect the environment. Make sure your impact web is colorful, clear, and easy to follow. Once your web is complete, write a short reflection that answers these questions. What surprised you about the number of ways vegetation regions can be affected? What do you think we could do to protect vegetation in the future? This activity will help you understand that vegetation isn't just something in the background. It's connected to everything around it. And by understanding these connections, we can make better decisions about how we treat the land. Good luck and get ready to untangle the web of change.